So I've created the setup for the eyes, and now I'm going to create the eyes themselves. I will no longer be using the sphere, and I'll not be connecting my geometry here directly, so I'll get an object merge node, and this will now be connected in place of the sphere. The sphere can be deleted, as we will no longer use it. I'll get a null, and this will serve as the endpoint for my eye network. I'll call this null I. The null can be used to set the object path in my object merge node. Now everything that is connected to this null will be connected to our rig. We are now ready to work on the eye geometry itself, and I'll begin by creating a circle. By default, the circle will be closed, and this will give us mesh geometry. I do not want this to be a mesh, I only want this to be a curve. So we'll have an open circle, and we'll get this by changing the arc type to open arc. I want the eye to face down the z axis, so the eye will be aligned down the yz plane. We'll be working in millimeters, so I'm going to change the radius to be 0 0.001, and this will need to be done for both the x and y axis. The uniform scale can then be increased, and this will have a size of 12. The average diameter for the eyes is 24 millimeters, so the radius will be half of that. I can connect the circle to my network. This circle should now be transformed into the correct position for our eye rig. I want to create a hole for the front of the eye. This hole will be used to specify both the cornea and the iris. To get this, I'm going to use a carve node. The diameter for the iris is something that I want to control, so I will be creating an interface for this. For the moment, I'll create a temporary interface, and I'll do this with a null. I'll replace this interface at a later stage. I'll edit the parameter interface for the null, and I can create a float slider. This slider will be for the iris diameter, so I'll give the slider the name and label iris. I'm going to give the slider a very large range. This slider will not specify a set value, and it is going to be converted into UV coordinates, so a large value will give us better control. We can now work in the carve node, and we can use this slider to help us update our parameters. There are two parameters which we'll need to control within the carve node, and these will be the first U and the second U. These will control the start and the end of the curve. The U value of the curve will be between 0 and 1, and in our case the start of the curve will be at 0, and the end of the curve will be at 1. I want to control both of these parameters with the iris slider, so I'll drag and drop a relative reference onto both of these parameters. We can now try and use this slider, but this slider should now have no effect, and that is because we need to invert the second U. So this will now be 1 minus the value from our slider. This will not work for a different reason, and that is because our slider value is now way too large. So I'm going to multiply these values by a very small value. In this case, I'll start with 0 0.00001. The reason for doing this is I'll just get more control from the slider, as it will allow me to use smaller increments. The standard value here will not give me a lot of control. Using a very small value here will give me better control. I'll make the value slightly smaller. I'll then edit my parameter interface, and I'll increase my range slightly. Next, I'm going to update the points on the eye. I do want a sufficient amount of divisions here. We can control these dynamically eventually, as you'll never really see the points at the back of the eye, but I do want to start with a spherical structure. My personal preference here is also to have points in the correct positions. I essentially want to have a joint which is going to be at the maximum position on the eye on each of the axes, so we need to have a point centered on the y axis, as well as points centered on the x axis and the z axis. Having points at the poles is needed in order to do this correctly. A division of 20 is going to work in this case. We can now use our slider to specify a hole in the front of the circle, and I actually want to calculate the distance of this hole. This is going to be the straight line distance of this hole, and not the distance along the curve. To do this, I'm going to have a duplicate of my carve node. We're going to use these carve nodes to isolate different parts of our curve. We have two sections which will allow us to isolate different values from this node. The first is cut. And here we can isolate sections of the curve, and this will allow us to cut the interior of the curve or the exterior of the curve. This will allow us to choose different parts of the curve. The second section is extract. This section is a lot more complex, and I'm not going to go through it. The operation that we'll perform here will be extract points. This will give us two points. The first will be placed at the position of the first U, and the second will be placed at the position of the second U. With these two points, I can get an add node. I'm not actually going to add anything here, instead I'm going to work in the Polygon tab, and here I'll activate the Bar Group folder, and this should create a straight line between our points. This will allow us to get the diameter of our iris. To get the diameter, I'll use a measure node. We're going to be measuring the primitive. 
and we want this to be a length measurement. This should give us a primitive attribute called perimeter. I'm going to rename this, and this will be renamed to iris diameter. I will activate the visualizations for the eye diameter. This visualization will be a marker, as I want to see the value. I'll make this a little bit darker, and I'll increase the size slightly to make it more readable. This is giving me a value in meters, and I want this to be in millimeters. For this, I'll get an attribute wrangle node. I'm going to update the iris diameter attribute, and this will be set using the iris diameter attribute multiplied by a thousand. This value is slightly larger than I want. I want the diameter to be around 12, so I'll adjust my iris float, and this is why I'm using large values here, as this will give me finer control. I can also make this an even smaller number, as the control is still not quite where I want it. I will also need to adjust the float parameter for the slider, as this is no longer sufficient for my control. I can now adjust the length, and this will be approximately 12 millimeters. I'll need to make sure that both of my curve nodes are using exactly the same equations. The first curve node should also be using keep inside. This will give us the main eyeball. Essentially, this is going to give us our sclera. We have also left a space which will eventually contain the iris. I can now use this curve to make my eyeball. I'll begin by getting a knife node, and what I'm going to do with this eye node is cut this curve in half. Essentially, I only want the curve above the z axis. I'll give the knife a direction of 1 in y, so this will now lie along the xz plane. Here I want to keep all of the primitives above the plane. This will mean we now have half of the curve. This can now be used along with a revolve node. Here the revolution will be around our z axis, and this will give us the shape for the eye. I can increase the divisions. Once again I want to have poles for my axes, so I want points to be aligned to both y axis and the x axis. For this a value of 24 should work. This could be considered reasonably low poly, but it is easy to increase the detail. This should however be more than we need for most game engine work, especially if we're not close up to the character. Next I want to create a cornea for the eye. To do this I'm going to use a polyfill node. It is possible to fill the hole using the revolve node, but the polyfill node will give us better control and it has far more options. I do want to be able to isolate the cornea, so I want a group which contains this fill. In the output tabs we will have patch groups. I can leave the name to be patch, as I will want to clear out the group at some point. I can now isolate this geometry, and I'll do this with the blast node. We can now examine the geometry which we're getting from the polyfill node, and this is not particularly good, so I will need to adjust the poly patch. We are also getting a warning on the poly patch node. The reason for this is we are actually generating poly patches for both sides of the sphere, so we are trying to generate geometry at both the front of the sphere and the back even though we would expect the geometry at the back not to be generated. To fix this, I'll get a fuse node, and I'll connect this before the poly patch node. I could try and fix this within the revolve node, but the options here are not really the best for this. We do not have single points at the back of the eye, where previously we had multiple points overlapping. Next, I can update my poly patch. I'm going to set the fill mode to quadrilateral grid. The results here will be pretty horrible. To update the quadrilateral grid, we'll want to use the patch construction section. Currently, the grid has been projected forward, and this is a result of the parameters within the patch construction. We can try and adjust these values, and we can use these values to adjust our cornea. It is, however, rather difficult to get good results with these parameters, so I'm not going to use them at all, and I'll turn them off by deactivating the deform patch parameter. This will give us much better topology, but this is not aligned correctly. I want this grid to align with my vertical axis, and to do this I can adjust the corner offset, and this will allow us to line up our patch. Now we could have kept the previous topology, so that we have topology which is very similar to the back with a lot of triangles. This however is not good for rendering quality, and it also has potential issues with performance. So I can discuss the problems by looking at the back of the eye. My fuse here is actually removing polygons, so I'll set the tolerance to be slightly lower. So previously we had triangles like this. These triangles are rather narrow, and that is not good for rasterization. This can give us performance problems within the game engine, but this will also give us less consistent results for rendering, as it can be difficult to calculate the reflections correctly with triangles like these. The quads will give us far more even triangles, and this can also result in better reflections.
I will not go into depth as to why the triangles give worse performance. This is related to overdraw and rasterization, and this is a reasonably complex topic. Basically with a game rig we want to keep the jump tree as even as possible, and we want to avoid narrow triangles. The cornea will need to bulge out of the eye. To do this I'm going to get a poly extrude node. In the viewport I can bring the cornea forward. So this will give us a rather square cornea, and this is not exactly what we want. We can try and manipulate this using the poly extrude node, but those will generally not give good results. To improve the shape I'm going to use a smooth node. This will improve the geometry, and in this case I'll set the strength to maximum. This will give me my corneal bulge. It will also make my corneal bulge editable. I can now re-merge the cornea and the eyeball. After these have been merged I can fuse them. This will reconnect the cornea and the sclera. I will want the fuse tolerance to be lowered, so we do not accidentally fuse points at the back of the eye. This can then be fed into the output for the eye. We should now have our updated eyes, and we should be able to reposition these eyes with our rig. These eyes however are rather basic, and we want to have irises for the eyes. It is also preferable to have options for the dilation of the pupils for the eyes, so we will need to add the iris, and I'll look at that next.